So this car was quite popular, so hopefully today's video is just as popular. We are going to convert this now into a little bit of a track beast. That's going to include things like tires, a full race exhaust, and tuned carburetors. And we're going to see just how wild we can make this little beast. Oh, it's so cute! At this point, I would like to say that, yes, I do a lot of content like this, so if you like it, please go ahead and subscribe. We're also going to make this air-cooled. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to make it a, a bigger engine. For now, we're just going to keep going with what we got. First things first, up that cam profile. We're going to have a race cam put in here. Very aggressive one. Going to increase the RPM. We are going to switch over these nasty old fuel economical carburetors that we just stuck trumpets on. I'm going to switch this to quad cam. Well, quad tunnel, dual ca uh, car. You get the idea. It's also going to run on a race fuel because this thing is just going to be absolutely absolutely beastly going with a race tubular and then we're gonna eh, maybe not have a very big exhaust this is already looking so gorgeous and so much better i love it oh that's awesome we're up 10 kilowatts uh. we're also going to say that they port and polish the head because why wouldn't they with this sort of thing the intake system is going to be a higher quality because this is aftermarket. The internals are going to stay cast, but we're going to up the quality to basically a baseline, something that's not atrocious. So, so far we've got negative two quality on the pistons and stuff, plus four quality on the head porting, turbos still don't exist, the fuel system has a little bit of a boost here, and the exhaust. This is going to be a very high quality exhaust. Now we're going to say that they planed the head to get extra compression ratio out of this. We've got a 56.8 kilowatts we are over double now of the original power. This is pretty awesome. And we've moved the red line up to 5,900 RPM. This is not particularly amazing, but it is so cool. We're also going to say that they switched the bodily, bodily body panel. Oh, we can't change to fiberglass? Frick. Can't believe we can't make a fiberglass version of it. What the hell, game? Okay, there we go. Now we can do a fiberglass version of the body. Much better. We got it down from nearly 700 to nearly 600. Damn. That's basically 90 kilograms gone right there. This is so much fun. We're probably gonna stick with the three speed, but I really would like a four speed. Oh wow, that is considerably faster. Oh wait, hold on, that's only one second? Still, I mean, uh, that's pretty good. The differential, do we go a lock? You know what? We might stick a locker in there just in case we do a little bit of rallying. <laughs> and the car which we're trying to replicate, the 1000 TC of Bath, we're gonna go with radials, and this is going to be a very much a sports compound. The tire uh, wheels will change as well. We're gonna go with something a little bit more age appropriate. There we go. Very fat little wheels. And we're going to widen it out just a little bit. How does it handle? Lots of oversteer. Okay, let's uh, bring that back. We are going to move over to here and we're going to select race because this was race suspension. This thing likes to understeer a lot. I'm not entirely sure why. All right, we've got the wheels poking out wider than the car. We've got it fairly good. I wish I could lower it even further, but that's as low as this thing will go. I wish I could lower the front independent of the rear as well. So our previous lap time around the test track, I believe was like a three minute 30, maybe something like that. What'll it do now? Wow, we've off knocked off a minute with just basically better tires, a little bit of suspension tuning, which is it's not better suspension. It's basically just tuning. All we did was just put in a stiffer spring and a stiffer dampeners. That's basically it. Oh, also a better transmission, I suppose. Yeah, that's fair enough. Our top speed hasn't gone up by much though. Hmm. All right, now it's time to make this thing more track worthy. Well, here we have it. We have the race version. Now, in a second, we'll get on to air-cooled stuff, but first, I just want to talk a little bit about the design. I am not too sure if this has turned out quite exactly the way I had hoped it would. I was thinking more along the lines of, say, the actual Abarth 1000TC, which I believe TC means tracker. Unfortunately, I don't have quite the malleability that they do, so we did a, a whole bunch of custom stuff. We made an oil cooler scoop. No, that's not a radiator that is meant for uh, actually cooling the oil to help with the fact that this will be a track car. Then this is still just for air cooling. This is the exhaust that comes out here. Then we got little uh, brake air ducts around here and a lot of venting around the rear wheels. Just a whole bunch of fun little things. Uh, now let's move on to the air cooling section of the video. Now I was told that cooling airflow zero replicates an air cooled engine. 
Not true. Unfortunately, there is still a radiator and it still can be punctured, all that kind of stuff. We're actually going to have to dig into the code for that one. So let's go over to the code. So here's one I prepared earlier. I just ripped this code directly from the air cooled little card that's actually in BeamNG already. I went is cooled and then just basically took all of this, went to the cooling system and I went to that, basically all of that and pff, there you go. Now you can play with a whole bunch of these things to get a little bit warmer. I'm I'm probably going to make it overheat a little bit more if I can figure out how to do that. There's a lot of things here you can play with though, and that's up to you to figure that out. It doesn't actually change a whole lot, but it will get a lot warmer. We're just gonna down this to say 10, so hopefully it'll overheat just a little bit more. Now let's open up BeamNG. Did you guys know that Monza is in Italy? Well, let's go have a little bit of fun around Monza then with this really uh, Italian car. I also realized at some point that I probably could have gotten a little bit more power out of this. I probably also should have switched to a uh, hard top version of this car for a race car because, well, it's a race car, so you'd want it to be a little bit, you know, less death. But th there wasn't probably a whole lot of choice in the whole death matter anyway, so I mean, wh what can you do? Who, who knows? And who cares? This thing is feeling quite sprightly. Oh, oh, hey, look at that. You know what I didn't do? I didn't change the brakes. <laughs> All right, game, let me select the gears then. I kind of want to know what this thing feels like with a uh, a locked diff. Let's go switch that over. Okay, so we got a locked diff coming up to a big sweeping corner, going into fourth gear, which is new for this car. No, okay. Okay, well, you know what? It does get a little unruly. Oh, dear. Oh, wow, we've really crushed that in quite harsh. Yikes. That's fine, we can start again. Oh, 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 wheel spin for days. Oh, oh, that is a lot of wheel spin. And it only really goes away when I start bouncing off the rev limiter. So this is feeling already like it just, it turns a whole lot better. Got a little bit of oversteer problem, which, oh dear, really needs downforce to be fixed. Ah, brum brum. <laughs> Unfortunately, downforce hadn't been figured out by this sort of period, apart from you may... S no, that would have been in the 70s, I think, when uh, they started getting on an F1. And F1 is really where it showed up, especially with Lotus, because Lotus, oh boy. They had some really, really innovative ideas, and they did uh, quite swimmingly with their downforce options. Especially when they came out with like the curtain stuff, which was so... Uh, great and problematic at the same time that they, they banned it and quite rightfully so back in the day that was just not a good idea oh dear and I think they're really only the next time you ever saw it was when it uh, came to the Pikes Peak performance cars and uh, I mean uh, they can take their life into their own hands and very often they do oh nice coming down what is this the most I can't remember what this is called this is doing pretty well. And usually right here would be my breaking point, but we're going to break a little bit later because we are very slow. Nice. And this is like a second and third. Oh, overheated, huh? That's nice. Oh, bugger. I probably should have turned the oil calling up and the engine calling down. I wonder what that would have done. That, that would have been funny. Yeah, I like it. Oh, dear. Well, let's uh, bring out its competitor. Okay. I brought out its competitor and this thing is goddamn fast. It's also not entirely accurate. The rear boot was not open as a spoiler per se, but more of a, a way of just getting more cooling into the engine itself. It looks kind of fun though, I like it. And makes me think that I probably could have gone further with my engine. Oh, wow, okay, there's an over rev risk. Is there no rev? No, there is a rev limiter. Unless it's getting valve float. You know what, this is probably like overstroked and bored out and all that kind of stuff. Which is not something you could do in automation. You have to kind of have forethought and actually make the engine smaller. Which is not really how the whole system works, but sure. Really what it should be is you would have the sliders at the smallest. And if you increase your block quality, then you have the ability to overbore. Which, is, yeah, is what it should have been in the first place. Let's uh, have a look at some details here. Wow, this is creating 
A hundred-ish horsepower? Metric horsepower, it's so funny, right? Yeah, we are not generating nearly that much power. And 175 newton meters. Bugger. Whereas this thing revs a lot higher, but creates like a small portion of the power. It's only creating 75 horsepower. Also, it's much bigger. That car is minuscule. If this is one or uh, two meters long, then that thing's probably going to be around 1.7 meters long. And I don't think I ever saw such an option. Ah, oh, weird. Well, that thing wins against this one, but I also think this one might be a little bit older. So let's keep going. Also, I think its gearing is considerably shorter as well. Oh dear. Well, I mean, uh, let's go back. And we're going to unlock this. We're going to make it a 1.5 liter. No, probably like a 1200. It's a little bit of an overbore and a little bit of an extra stroke. Strokey kits wouldn't be particularly unrealistic. Actually, you know what? You'd probably get more likely to have a strokey kit than an overbore anyway. So maybe we'll make it a little bit squarer. There we go. Now we can change this to the 12 that I wanted to. <laughs> And we're going to see how much extra power we can make. All right, now that I'm thinking about it, yes. The original Fiat 500 went from 500 cc's to the 1,000, I believe, is a 1 liter. So they doubled the size. Screw this. We are not generating nearly enough power. We are going to go way up to, say, a 1.6 liter. There we go. And we're going to drop that RPM ever so slightly. And we'll have a little bit of damage on the pistons. That's fine by me. Okay, maybe a lot of damage. <laughs> okay, we're now creating 89 kilowatts which is basically 90 which is 120 we are getting very close to what that other car is we can't do a whole lot more though we do just need to do the rest with tuning unfortunately without going like drastic on quality sliders this is kind of where it's gonna sit so we're gonna let it sit we also have severe issues with wheel spin now suppose that's fine we're gonna go to that we're gonna go to the drivetrain oh it wants us to be longer now ah uh, we don't want it to be too much longer because that was already pretty bad what we might do is have a longer gear ratio and then down our spacing to give us that uh, low end acceleration that we wanted. And they just have a really long top gear. There we go. 7.9 seconds to 100. That's uh, what was it originally? 23 seconds. So this is about a third of the time to get to 100. Pretty decent if you ask me. Also, this won't be trash. This will be regular old. Oh, we can make the front tires bigger. Nice. Brakes are pretty bad. Maybe we'll switch up to those brakes on the front. Nice. You know what? No, they're going to stay the same sort of brake. And what we're going to do is we're going to increase the brake pad type. Maybe if you're smart, do a little bit of a brake balance change and then make the rear brakes bigger. There we go. Much better brakes now. Oh, yeah. We should probably also get rid of that and uh, get rid of the rear seat. We're also going to switch to a hard top. Okay. I think we're good. Do we have problems with oversteer? Maybe. God damn it. We're also not going to select race. We're going to select sport. Let's give it a final test on the test track. 235. So it's not actually a lot faster. Also going to down this because I'm afraid that we're not going to reach that top speed anyway. And this probably actually still is a bit trash, honestly. <laughs> 7.6 to 100 and we got it a little bit longer. There. I, th I think that's good. What does the quarter mile say? Wow. A 15 second? That's impressive. Like, for most cars, that's pretty decent. We can give it a description. There we go. Done. <laughs> Oh, God damn. Control F, cooling, grab that, paste there, turn the oil radiator volume up, turn the engine block cooling efficiency down to like a nine, turn this up to maybe a 23. I'm not sure if down or up helps here, but we're going to turn it down a little bit and hope that this gives me more of the sort of experience I want. Update, yes. Play beam NG, yes. God damn it, Chrome. All right, I think I know what the issue is. This wasn't happening when I was in free roam. I think it is actually literally when you're in track mode, it makes it chrome now. What the hell? Okay. Well, <laughs> I brought it here to do a bit of a Gymkhana track. So as you can see here, I think you're meant to go around, do a few loop-de-loops, and then come around and end, I think, on that port or something like that. I've never done this before. Let's give it a try. Now, do we go locker or no? Oh, that sounds a lot better now. Okay. You know what, game? You can't be trusted. Where am I going? Left. Okay, let's go left. I couldn't figure out which uh, direction to go there for a second. Oh, that's going to be a hard curb. So this is not the handling beast that I thought it would be. <laughs> it's, uh, it feels a little bit scary. Not going to lie. Oh, God, this is... A terrible Jim Connor idea. Whose idea was this? You make a mistake, you go into the water, you're probably gonna drown and die. Oh dear god. Probably should restart this one, but since this is not gonna be a regular thing, I don't think it particularly matters. Oh god. First gear, please. Get me around. Yes, good. Where where even are we going? I do not know this track at all. 
Uh, well, that's gonna hurt our handling just a smidge. So I suppose let's try that. You know what? Actually, we're gonna slip the dip on. I swear I know how to speak English. Oh god. Oh god. Oh. Well, we lost a little bit. That's fine though. We, we're still quite good. Wow, that first gear is really short. But hopefully this time coming around here, we'll be able to get this uh, direction correct, which is to go this way, then come around. Yes, go around the corner, please, without falling into the water. <laughs> and then around this, there you go. Much better this time. Oh, much better this time. Maybe the diff lock wasn't the best idea. Being entirely honest. Well, into first gear. Come around here. Got a little bit of a, uh, a burnout going, but at least we're getting more traction down to the wheels, so it'll help with acceleration. Oh, <laughs> the lockups on this thing are scary as hell. Our sec uh, third to fourth gear shift is quite a long one, so we're not really going to bother doing that. Oh, it's a turnaround. Okay. Oh. <laughs> So yes, you do get quite sideways with the diff locks on, but it does give you better traction off the line, which is something that this car needed. Oh boy, we missed. Oh, come on! Okay, it's getting that uh, glitch where you can't have a locker on, which you would actually need a locker to move. So, I mean, sure. We're gonna limp across the line in our trike for an amazing final part of the lap. Oh, come on, really? It's fine, we can do this. Oh wow, we are really hampered down on power now. Let's let's turn right, which is the safe way to turn currently with the way our car is. Oh, turning left is a bit sketchy. We're so close to drowning in water, so we're <laughs> gonna be very careful and nurse it across the line with only a hundred percent accelerator. There we go. Okay, well, let's go take this over to the automation test track and try to do something over there. Boy, howdy. Okay, we brought it out here to the old racetrack, hopefully to get a little bit of a, uh, a comparative time. Now that we've got the diff locks on, let's try that again, shall we? Brum, through first gear, done. Switch over to second gear, maybe that was a little too early of a change. Probably should have done a little bit more of a burnout. Brake without locking up. Let's get around this corner nicely. Oh, 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 no, we're fine. You don't have to do that, car. You can you could just drive in a straight line. I mean, if, if you want to, I'm, I'm not telling you what to do. Oh, that rear wheel axle hop. <laughs> oh, what is happening? Oh, that is atrocious. Uh, we should probably restart this lap. <laughs> oh my God, that rear axle hop. Okay, let's try again. And this time we're gonna do a little bit more of a burnout before we change at about 50 seems to be the place to change. So we're good there. Okay. Braking really hard seems to lock us up quite a lot. Even though our brakes are not particularly great. And because we got through there normally, we're able to stay in third gear. Now this is where we lost it last time. Where we were a little bit more floor it happy and not so much kind of finessing it around. Oh god. It went sideways and didn't want to stop going sideways. You know what? Probably would have died. <laughs> With uh, no safety, really, like maybe a lap belt, our head would be purely smeared around that steering wheel. God damn. But we're back from the dead because death ne never really does anything to us. And changed our 49, wow, that was perfect. It's exactly kind of where I was hoping to change it. So let's change a little bit before 50. And that turned out quite nice. Okay, let's not get a penduluming in. Let's just get into the third gear, get it doing well. Oh, oh, hello. Is our axle still hopping? Okay, I think it's good when we're going in a straight line. Oh boy. I think because this thing is also so short of a wheelbase that uh, it really does like to turn around a lot, which is a problem with this sort of short wheelbase. It's great for uh, tight, twisty corners, but anything longer than, say, a medium corner... Oh, sorry. A sh anything bigger than a hairpin, basically, with a car this short will just have this car turned around. Oh dear, see, look at that. It just, it wants to go in the long corners. Ah, crab apples. We were so close to catching up to where we were. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen a car wrap like that before. I didn't hit it on the side, I hit it on the front and it like kind of bananaed the car. But we're back alive again. Okay, let's try this again 
This is going to be quite tricky, so I'm going to go silent. There we go. Nice, we got it. And you know what? This is actually getting up to the top speed a lot quicker than I was expecting. I was thinking that this thing would probably struggle to reach its top speed. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. This has become a lot harder to handle <laughs> compared to the OG version. Why is it so much worse? I don't understand. Like, the engine may weigh a little bit more, so that may upset the balance? I don't know, man. Unclear. But we have done a 124. So compared to the OG, we have knocked off eight seconds-ish, which is pretty good. We were just uh, in front of the Minardi Beef, which I don't even remember what that is. And we were just behind the ABC by Turbo, which I don't remember what that is either. Ah, uh, that's the ABC. There was meant to be the Ace, not the ABC. Yeah, that was my bad. Yeah, that was a pretty cool car. But we are going to do a bit of a nightmare and we're gonna go the racetrack circuit. Oh, this is gonna be so bad. So, whilst I do this, I'll uh, give you the Doug's, I mean, Phil's score. Starting with the weekend category, the styling is much like the base model, but more hungered down, more aggressive, and because of that, it gets a 10. The acceleration is beefed up over the base model, but compared to new cars, it's very much middle of the road. It gets a 5 out of 10, which is halfway to 10. So, yeah. Its handling goes from comfortable to something that you'd love to have in the hills, as long as you don't engage the locker, therefore, it gets an 8. The fun factor is quite high, chucking it into corners, and those g-forces will pull your smile wider. It gets a 10. The cool factor is very high, as these are rare, everyone will want to talk to you about what this car is. It gets a 10 also. For a total weekend score of... 43. Now, moving on to dailies. Features are more sparse than the original, so it goes from a 1 to a 0 out of 10. Its comfort is a lot harder, with a nice feel on the road. I'm not going to deduct points because the comfort of knowing you'll make it through the corners really does count. It gets a 5 out of 10. Its quality is quite low, though there's less chance of rust. But these engines over the years have been known to, say, let go of connecting rods. It gets a 1. The practicality takes a dive with this one, as it's decked out for racing. It gets a 1 out of 10, purely because you can have one passenger, but more likely a co-driver. As for value, they are absorbently expensive, beyond the reach of peasants like us, but I do see them going up in price still, so it might be a great investment. It gets a 5 out of 10, for a total daily score of 12. Add them all up for a total fill score of 55, which puts it firmly between Santa Slay and the OG Fiero Dino. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I really do like making these lightweight little sports cars, race cars type thing. I do want to go to these, do a little bit more. I might do something maybe from the 90s. Who knows? Something maybe like a Honda Civic maybe. I have a bit more fun with this whole idea, including something along the lines of Spoon. But I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for, well, 500 subscribers. I just got them today. That's really freaking awesome. There will be a video for that coming up soon. Subscribe if you want more content like this, and I'll catch you next time. Mm, goodbye.